a very good morning class today we are going to uh, discuss and i'll be giving you a demo for preparation of a maxillary canine you should always remember that the major difference between preparation of a maxillary central incisor and that of a ma ma maxillary canine there is just one difference which is in preparation of the incisal edge of the canine as you all are aware in case of a maxillary central incisor the incisal edge lies in a single plane it is a flat plane while which is not the case with a maxillary canine in maxillary canine we have two slopes in the incisal edge region one is the mesial slope and another is the distal slope of the maxillary canine so while preparation of a maxillary canine the main difference is that we have to follow the mesial and the distal slopes of uh, the canine during our incisal reduction so instead of giving three grooves in a single plane we have to give uh, grooves on both the mesial as well as distal uh, slopes and then we have to uh, then we have to flatten the plane so that we maintain the two slopes of the maxillary canine so now i am going to tell you what are the various steps involved in preparation of a maxillary canine so coming to the steps themselves the first step is incisal reduction wherein we good give depth orientation grooves in the on the incisal edge in case of a maxillary canine the incisal edge has two slopes mesial and distal slope so we have to give our depth orientation grooves following the two mesial as well as the distal slopes after we have given the uh, depth orientation grooves then we need to flatten the incisal edge and we should take care that our burr is not reducing more to structure uh, uh, than indicated by the depth orientation grooves so once you have finished with flattening of the incisal edge of a maxillary canine in two planes which are the mesial and the distal slopes of the incisal edge then comes the second step which is labial reduction similar to maxillary uh, central incisor labial reduction for a maxillary canine is again a biplanar reduction in this biplanar reduction we have to divide the labial surface into two halves one is the incisal two third and another is the cervical one third so first of all we have to uh, draw imaginary lines on the labial surface and then after we have divided it into three equal parts then first we place our burr at the tip of the lower uh, border of the middle third and the area above that comes as the incisal two third so then we have to give incise uh, depth orientation grooves in the incisal two third area and these depth orientation grooves have to be given at a slight angulation which is around 20 degree to the long axis of the tooth once you have given these depth orientation grooves in the incisal two third region then you have to focus your attention on the cervical one third while giving the depth orientation grooves on the cervical one third we all must take care that our burr should be positioned along the long axis of the root so that the, if we compare the depth orientation grooves given uh, in the incisal two third and uh, given in the cervical one third they should be at different angles once uh, these depth orientation grooves are given properly then we have to reduce the labial surface and again we have to take care that we are not reducing more to structure than has been indicated by the depth orientation grooves once you have uh, finished the incisal two third reduction then in the cervical one third region when you are reducing the tooth surface you have to take care that you are following the cervical margin because cervical margin should never be in a straight line it should follow the cej or cemento enamel junction and it should be curved and the 
curvature should rise till the interdental papilla on both sides and by doing so you will be coming or uh, rising your burr on mesial as well as distal side till the upper border of the lower one third or the cervical one third so your uh, finish line will not be in a straight line it will be in the form of a smiley once you have completed the labial reduction then comes the proximal reduction for doing the proximal reduction you have to use a long needle burr or a contact breaking burr with the help of which you have to remove all the proximal contact areas and you have to break them contact with the adjacent teeth you should always make it a point and try to uh, leave a lip of enamel in contact with the adjacent teeth while you are doing reduction with this long needle burr once you have achieved uh, the separation there will be just be a thin lip of enamel which will be touching the adjacent tooth then after this you have to break that lip of enamel with the help of an enamel hatchet once this is done then you have to then we can move to the palatal uh, side on palatal surface we have to use a round and taper burr because we require a chamfer margin there so with the help of that round and taper or a torpedo burr what we have to do first we have to move our burr in the cingulum area and once our cingulum area and the margins on the palatal side are complete then we focus on the lingual slope which lies above the cingulum of canine that area is then reduced with the help of a, a flame shaped burr the curvature of the flame shaped burr is just placed on the lingual slope and then we make sure that we do a reduction so that it can accommodate the material which will be a part of the crown which we are giving but the reduction should not be so deep that it compromises the strength of canine now coming to the preparation of the maxillary central incisor as all of you can appreciate in the typhodon teeth set as i was telling you earlier that the incisal edge of a maxillary canine is not a flat plane as is the case with the incisal edge of a maxillary central incisor it is divided into two slopes one is the mesial slope of the incisal edge and second one is the distal slope see and the distal slope as all of you can appreciate here also that distal slope is longer so once we are completed with the incisal reduction there also the distal slope of the prepared tooth should be slightly longer than the mesial slope of the prepared maxillary canine now see first of all we have to give depth orientation grooves on the distal as well as mesial slope so while giving them you have to take half the bur depth inside the tooth structure to get your adequate depth of your depth orientation groove so now as all of you can see here also that i have given the depth orientation grooves on the mesial slope as well as on the distal slope now after giving the depth orientation groove we have to do reduction of the incisal edge in two planes one is the mesial slope of the incisal edge of the maxillary canine and second is the now we are trying to reduce the distal slope of the maxillary canine so now what you have to do since you have already made the depth orientation groove you have now after i have flattened the incisal edges in two parts mesial and distal slopes of the maxillary canine all of you can see that we have got the incisal edge in the same manner reduced as is present in the natural tooth so you can see a mesial slope which is slightly smaller in length in comparison to the distal slope 
now what we are doing we are dividing the labial surface so we are we have come to the labial portion and we'll be doing the labial reduction in two halves and the two halves are incisal two-third as you can see by the burr in which you have to prepare the incisal two-third portion and cervical one-third so these two have to reductions have to be done in different planes so that in the end we get a curved labial surface as is present in the natural tooth so for doing this first we'll have to give orientation grooves depth orientation grooves in the incisal two-third region at a different angulation followed by changing the direction of the burr and giving the cervical depth groove parallel to the long axis of the tooth so once you have given these depth orientation grooves in two planes your tooth will look like this see this is showing you the incisal uh, two-third reduction at a different angle while the cervical one-third is at a slightly different angle so by doing reduction in both these planes you will get a biplanar reduction of the labial surface so now i am reducing the incisal two-third area please note that the tip of my burr is only moving in the incisal two-third region it is not going to the cervical region this is very important for the biplanar reduction which we want to achieve so after completing the incisal two-third reduction in a different plane as you can see that this uh, reduction has been done on a angle see can you see and now we'll be going to the cervical one-third in which the uh, axis of our burr should be parallel to the long axis of the tooth so now coming to the cervical part see as i am doing the cervical reduction my burr is not moving in a straight direction it is following the cj and it is raising on both the sides this is very important to get a margin which is not going to harm the soft tissue present so now if you see this canine from a side from proximal side you will see that in the incisal uh, incisal two-third the angle of my burr is slightly at an angle and this is my cervical angulation so this way i have achieved a biplanar reduction can you appreciate a thin line which is separating the two parts this this i am talking about this line see where my burr is moving above this i have done it at an angulation and this lower cervical one third i have tried to keep my burr parallel to the long axis and also if you see the movement of my burr it is not in a straight direction as i am going to the proximal areas i am trying to raise my burr slightly so that to get proper margins now what we have to do we have to do proximal reduction so as i told you for proximal reduction we have to find a very thin burr which should be like a needle and then we have to keep it on the proximal area and do reduction in such a manner that there is a small lip of enamel present on the present adjacent uh, to the adjacent tooth can you all appreciate this small lip of enamel which has been formed here so this lip of enamel which is in contact with the adjacent teeth can you see this lip of enamel ha huh. so this lip of enamel is ensuring that we have not encroached upon the adjacent tooth and we have not prepared any area of the adjacent tooth once you have achieved this lip of enamel then you have to break this lip of enamel with the help of your burr or you can also use enamel hatchet for the same purpose so can you see all of you see this lip of enamel which is present so now what i am doing i will try to break this lip of enamel with the help of my burr only and i have achieved that it was so thin that by putting in slight pressure only i was able to break it so once you have done this 
incisal contact has breakage has been achieved on one side now in this video this is in continuation to the last video all of you can appreciate the biplanar reduction which has happened and you can see the two planes in which we have done the incisal redu labial reduction of the canine and also one more thing which you should appreciate is the clarity of the margin can you see this margin starting from one end and till another end and it is a 90 degree angle to the prepared tooth structure so on the labial side we have tried to make a shoulder margin so that it can support the extra amount of bulk of material required as per the aesthetic requirements of the patient now coming to the palatal side the only thing which is different from the labial side is we have to first prepare the margin and for preparing the margin on the palatal side instead of using a flat and taper burr which we did on the labial side which was creating a shoulder margin we have to create a chamfer margin in chamfer margin we can accommodate less amount of bulk but since this is an unesthetic area and will not be visible from outside therefore we try to reduce less tooth structure and thus is our choice of margin which is a chamfer margin and this margin can be achieved with the help of a torpedo burr or with the help of a round end taper burr so that round end or the torpedo end of the burr you have to take half the thickness of that burr inside the tooth and then just prepare the cervical area as I am showing you but as you go to the proximal side you have to raise your burr as all of you can see while I am preparing so in the middle I bring my burr down but as I go on the proximal side I tend to raise my burr and then you have to stop in between just to check that half the burr is inside the tooth or not see here I have been able to achieve half the thickness burr depth inside the tooth so this is sufficient for me as I don't require lot of bulk of material but after you have done that can all of you see from so far away also you can easily appreciate the entire margin and this margin is required because the prosthesis will seat in this area and this will also avoid any secondary caries from happening under our prosthesis now once we have prepared the margin on the palatal aspect using a round and taper burr then the only area left for preparation is this sloping area on the area present just above the cingulum of canine for reducing this you have to use a flame shaped burr and slightly remove some amount of tooth structure so that material with which we are making the prosthesis has certain amount of area present so once you have just moved smoothen out the palatal slope just uh, just above the cingulum you have to check again and again that you are not doing any excess preparation so you should always be very careful and avoid any excess preparation because that will compromise the strength of your tooth okay so now when you see I have reduced the this palatal slope which lies just above the cingulum with help of a flame shade burr it has smoothened out you just have to remove around let's say 0.7 mm of tooth structure from this area once you are done with this now you can appreciate the canine preparation which has been formed after our preparation can all of you see the two slopes of the maxillary canine mesial and the distal slope also try to appreciate the margin the margin on the labial side is a shoulder margin and it is rising on both the sides if you see the direction of my burr it is rising on both the sides so that we are not damaging any interdental papilla once this area you have observed now coming to the palatal aspect 
can you see this 90 degree uh, preparation of the margin and along with that we have to reduce this upper slope with the help of a flame shade burr so now after you have followed all the steps you will have this kind of a preparation which has slightly pointed line angles and point angles present can you see this tip it is slightly pointed hai na? and this tip this area this mesial edge this proximal edge on the mesial side all of them i have slight pointed tip so now the only thing left is we have to use a burr and slightly just round off the pointed line angles and point angles so that there is no stress accumulation in these high stress areas because these point angles and line angles they say have the maximum stresses and may lead to failure of our prosthesis so now once i have removed the lines angles and the point angles you will see a slightly rounded uh, preparation which will be slightly similar to the unprepared maxillary canine in shape thank you very much have a nice day and please try to uh, learn as much as possible from this video one more thing i would sh like to show you from this angle is if you see from the bird's eye view see from one angle only you are able to appreciate both the labial as well as the palatal margins one second i'll just blow some air there so it's more clear see now so one view see from a bird's eye view you can see both the labial margin as well as the palatal margin in one go so why do you need to check this you need to check this because if you are not able to see both the margins together all around the tooth all the margins should be clear if this is not the case then there is some undercut present this undercut if not checked at this time will lead to ill-fitting prosthesis your prosthesis will not seat properly because of these undercuts so you after you have finished your preparation you should try to with the help of a mouse mirror try to see all the margins of your preparation from one view if that has been achieved then your preparation is complete thank you have a nice day if anybody has any problems or difficulties feel free to contact me